My name is Colleen Kalishu. I am the lead genetic counselor in the Stanford Center for Inherited Cardiovascular Disease. Uh, and we are going to um, play around with ClinVar a little bit and look at how you can use it uh, to look up on variants identified in genetic testing. Um, CLINVAR is a database uh, that has submissions from a variety of clinical laboratories as well as some research groups uh, where they submit variants they have either observed in their samples or um, curated with an assertion about what they think the classification is and in some cases why they think that's the classification and in now a minority of cases what um, their um, so what. If you learn more about ClinVar, you can um, check out some of the links on this website, their FAQ or the About ClinVar. Let's death. So I have three variants that I've reviewed recently in my practice that we're going to take a look at in ClinVar. So we'll look at this first one, and we're going to search using the gene symbol and the p-dot nomenclature. This variant is in ClinVar. Um, same variant that I was looking for, ARG169, GLI, 505A to G, and MY7. Uh, I'll double check that my transcript is right just to be safe. So here's the transcript I got from my laboratory report 257.2. They're it on 257.3, which is uh, the same transcript, just a more updated version should be fine. Uh, you can get a quick overview up top here of what the clinical significance is asserted to be by the submitters and how many submitters there are. The star system can also tell you about uh, um, rough confident one can be in the uh, assertion in that for a case like this, there's only one submitter and there was no assertion criteria provided, it would be no stars. And then you go up from there, for example, if you have multiple um, submitters who agree, that would get more stars. If you have an expert panel review or a, a published guideline, that would get more stars. We hear more about the star system on the ClinVar website. So I typically go down here um, and look at what data has been submitted and what assertions have been submitted by laboratories. There are some other useful things as well. You can use link to the variation view viewer, to UCSC, to B TB SNP. Um, you can link out to Thousand Genomes Browser. Uh, so a lot of um, different um, bits uh, and um, resources you can find from this entry. So normally I would um, start here on what the clinical assertions are, and I can see it's been submitted by one laboratory, LMM, a genetic testing lab in Boston, and it, um, called likely pathogenic for um, primary familial hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The assertion or the clinical Classification is always for a specific disease. Uh, and I also noticed last evaluated that they haven't reviewed this since March 1st, 2008. So um, it'd be a quite outdated review, and there may be new data um, that we would need to take a look at. And then, you know, ideally, I'd like to know more about what, why they think that it was likely pathogenic. And um, if, if I could, how many patients have they seen it in with what? What phenotypes and did they have any segregation? So data that might not necessarily be published, but through these daring efforts we can all gain access to. So that's what these two tabs are for. Um, that the format of ClinVar is evolving. Uh, so the um, view you may look at may be a little different from what I'm looking at here, and um, over time uh, more data will be available from the majority of submitters. Uh, but what I would be looking for is typically in this section here under description, um, some laboratories would provide a summary of personnel for their classification. Unfortunately, that's not here in this case. What you see is they've seen it in one family. We unfortunately don't have the phenotype of that family. Um, and in that family, they saw it in 10 individuals. Uh, this is a case where if it was really critical for my classification um, or reputation, I might actually contact the laboratory to find out more information. Uh, for now, the supporting observations doesn't have um, much additional information, but uh, as I said, there's more to come here. So that's an example. Now let's look for another variant. We're going to look for this variant in a desmosomal gene, 
DSC2, and I'm going to use the C dot nomenclature instead just to show you different ways you can search. And that this variant is present in ClinVar as well. So you can confirm again. Now, interesting to see that this is a different transcript. So this is a different, oh, a different transcript number than the transcript number that I am I've been looking at that I got from my genetic testing laboratory. So I'm going to make sure that I have the right variant. It's likely given um, that the C dot and P dot are the same. But if you look here under HGVS, here and see the transcript that I'm working with, so a more recent version of it, and it has the same C dots. That would tell us on these two transcripts this variant is the same. So I am looking at the right variant. Now in this one, we see up here that there are four submitters. There's a new status of one star and that there's conflicting interpretations of the pathogenicity, uh, all the way from likely to bind to likely pathogenic with a couple of the US's in the middle. So that's certainly interesting. Um, we can see the emitters here, um, a handful of clinical laboratories, as well as one of the CSER groups. Of course, you can click to learn more about these groups and submissions. Um, and here is a situation where uh, laboratories actually have provided some of the evidence. That can be very useful in getting you insights into the rationale for their classification, and sometimes also internal data. So I would read through this, um, integrate it into my interpretation of the variant, similarly read through this. The uh, thing in ClinVar also is that it, um, several of the labs will provide link outs to the PubMed citations that they use. So that variant that was also present in ClinVar, but with more submitters and with conflicting classifications, and two of the submitters actually providing um, a rationale for their classification that you could review. So let's look at my next variant. And we're not going to use the gene name this time. We'll just try searching all of ClinVar using the PDOT. It's not found in ClinVar at all. So let's try a couple other things, just to, you know, just to be safe. We'll check with the C dot as well. All found in ClinVar. By searching one more, I'm going to change out this amino acid for a wild card. See if there's another variant. P dot here. No, I mean a lot of RYR2 results. So I think the lesson here is is, is that uh, always figuring out how best to do your searches in databases like this. I'm going to interpret all of this as this variant is not in ClinVar and I'm not going to be able to get data on it. And going back to the first variant that we were working with know whether or not there are variant results in a different amino acid at the same codon. So I'm going to use that wild card again. And I think it doesn't want me to have the P dot, so let's get rid of that. Here we go. This is narrowed down the search results, and we see um, since it was 169 uh, wild card, we get this variant that's further along in the protein, 1699. We can ignore that. And then we total of three variants at the same codon, including the one I was originally investigating. Uh, so this can be very useful um, in the new, uh, the 2015 ACMG classification criteria, where there is a pathic variant already known at the same codon, but for a different amino acid change. Uh, contributes to assessment of pathogenicity. So this is one way you can try and um, assess that. Uh, you know, a few other really nice things you can do with ClinVar. Um, one thing I came across recently was I was looking at um, the BAG3 gene, which is a gene um, that's associated with dilated cardiomyopathy. 
And it was the first time our team had seen a shift or nonsense variant in that gene. So I want to, kind of wanted to get a sense of how many of those are out there, um, what do other people think of them. So just search gene, uh, you're going to get all the variants that have been reported in that gene, both sequence variants as well as larger um, deletions. There are examples here, but if it was seen in a multi-gene microdeletion or duplication, you would get that as well. New conditions, the um, frequency in population samples if available, the clinical significance, um, and the rare status. And I find useful is seeing the distribution of variants over here. So, for instance, you know, a lot of sense variants, just a handful of frame shift and nonsense. Um, so, uh, well, there have been a de novo. It's interesting that there have been two de novo that have been reported. Uh, how much conflict is there? Uh, there's five conflicting variants with five variants with conflicting interpretations out of 12 with multiple submitters. Um, in this situation, I wanted to review the nonsense and frame shift variants. So I might go look at those. Here are two nonsense variants. Submitter, likely path, this one's likely pathogenic, the other's pathogenic slash likely pathogenic. I might go into those and look at them in a little bit more detail. And I want to go back and look at the frame shift variants. People think of either truncating or loss of the function variants is kind of the sense I'm trying to get. Here I see that these are all likely pathogenic or pathogenic as well. I might go through and look in detail at the variants and, and why. Those are a few of the things that you can do with ClinVar uh, when you are um, researching a variant that was identified through um, your genetic testing. I would also strongly encourage you to uh, um, lead the laboratories you work with to submit to ClinVar if they're not doing so already. Um, and if you are involved in any sort of um, variant identification efforts, whether it's you know a, a research laboratory or you work in a clinical lab, um, or if you're a group that um, does any sort of classification independently on your own, I would also encourage you to submit your data to ClinVar as um, sharing will help all of us uh, better interpret uh, the genome. So that's ClinVar.